Hello everybody, welcome. Round nine preview. Yep, we're already in round nine. Once again, I'm joined by the lovely Melly. Melly, stay. Just stay for one episode, huh? Come on, sit down. Come out. Good girl. All right. So once again, joined by Melly for the show. We'll see how long she stays here for. Who knows? But anyway, um, we'll get started round nine. Uh, we've got every team's got a got a win. Every team's got a loss. So uh, it's all running pretty good. If we look at the ladder real quickly, Renegades Anonymous sitting on top with two two wins above Renegades. Uh, Renegades in the big the big uh, game today against oh, this week against Iron Rollins, so second versus third. And then um, also we've got Marcel coming in fourth. Jabroni's in fifth. Um, Jabroni's still scoring high, but not the highest scoring team anymore. That that. Uh, goes to Renegades, followed by Rangers. Sugar Daddies is sixth. Second Destroy, seventh on a three game win streak, I believe. No Dumplings, um, eighth. Maltese Falcons, ninth. And How the Mighty Have Fallen, defending champion Gods of Olympus, bottom of the ladder. So, yeah. So, that's the ladder this week. Um, see, we'll see what happens moving forward. You know, hopefully Collie loses and gets kicked out of the five. That will be absolutely fantastic because that's what we all want, of course. Melly agrees. Is that what you want, Melly? Yes, that's what you want. All right. So, um, look, we're going to go into the round. We'll start off with the first game of the rounds. It's actually Seek and Destroy versus Jacob's Jabronis. So, all right. So, Seek and Destroy versus Jacob's Jabronis. Are you, are you fine there, mate? Yeah, good. All right. So <laughs> once Melly gets off the table, all right. So Sing and Destroy, they're on a, they're on a bit of a win streak at the moment. They've won three games in a row, playing well, scoring scoring nice. Well, James Brown's actually had two, haven't had, haven't had the best of weeks lately. Like two, I think two losses in a row, maybe like if I'm not mistaken. So they're not doing too well. Um, Jacob Brown is on Sing and Destroy. So Charlie Dixon's going to play full four for Sing and Destroy. Um, his projected score is three hundred nine, followed by uh, Josh Jenkins now. Vossi, please make sure you got the right half forward in this week. I mean, none of your players are playing on Saturday, on Friday anyway, so you have to worry. Maybe Sinclair, but you know, make sure the team's right and they make your changes, please. But um, he's going to keep his team still until the way it was last week, I believe. I can't see many changes. The only thing he's done is brought Zach Smith into the ruck. Um, but he's keeping blue stars tackles. Not Reese Stanley into changes is interesting. Um, both had a bad week last week, so you were bringing him in. Hamish Hartlett, he's another option to bring in as well. And once and James Kelly as well. But his four line's a bit of an issue. He doesn't know. Jenkins has a good week. Lynch has a good week. Carr has a good week. So he's a bit stuck and not knowing, not knowing what to do there. Um, the good thing is he's very consistent with Dylan Shields and very consistent with Patrick James um, and Matt Proust, to be honest. So that's his team there. His projected score is 309. Um, so he actually plays, as I said, Jake Jabronis this week. Jabroni's projected score of 335. Uh, they have been very, very high scoring. As I said, they've had a couple of bad weeks. Josh Bruce, hopefully have a, have a better game than what he did last week for Jabroni's. And Tom Lynch is hoping to have a better, ga a better game. He's playing against Adelaide up back in, back in the Gold Coast. Um, the whole team's been shit, so I'll see what he does. Parker against Hawthorne. And Mitchell against Hawthorne, his tackler, on Friday night. Um, they normally do all right. Hawthorne's up, not going to tag. So we'll see what happens there. Hopefully they have a bad game because, you know, I'll go to Hawthorne. But um, Vincent Montaigne in the midfield, nothing's changed in there. They're playing really well. Um, they're getting, averaging between and almost 100 points a week. Um, and he's got Sam Jacobs in the ruck against, I think, this week will be against Curry because I think Tom Nichols is dropped. And Lockie Neal is halfback. That's the moment to change now. Trent Conchin has been named and he's back this week, so that's an option to bring in. He did have Trent Conchin as his halfback, but in saying that, Lockie Neal has been really good, so whether he wants to make that change, I don't know. Um, maybe wants to bring Trent Koch in the midfield or just leave leave it as it is. Who knows? He did have a bad week last week, so there might be a bit of a time for a change. Um, Tom Mitchell did have a bad week uh, last week, but yeah, he should, shouldn't have a bad one this week. But uh, Realistically, Jabroni should win this game. Um, should, should end the second destroyer's winning streak. So, yeah. so We'll go to the next game now. It's getting a bit chilly at the moment. It's actually getting rather cold. And speaking of cold. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Freezing. Peter Dunstan here. 
freezing cold. That's right. Peter Dunstan is ice cold. He's lost last week. He was useless last week. Playing bad moves, putting Zebu in utility. Half forward didn't do any good. You are ice cold, Dasher. Um, you try to make a few changes this week. Eddie Betts against no defense in Gold Coast should have a good game. Steve Johnson, Dobbs are not defense either, so interesting to see what happens in that game. Um, he should pick up. They're playing back at back at the uh, was it Spotless Stadium where they play. Troy and Bryce Gibson as utility. Now Gibson has been good lately, and we know he's going to cut the tag because North Melbourne have lost their tagger. So see what happens. But Bryce Gibson has been really good surprisingly. So we'll see what happens um, with that one, as I said. But Heath Shaw in the midfield getting over fifty points, getting twenty five kicks a game almost, which is unbelievable. And he's, he's taking Scott Penery out of the main spots in terms of utility or halfback. He's putting Scott Penery in as a, as a midfielder. So we'll see if that pays off. Brody Younger in the ruck. He's got Jack Zebel halfback now. Josh Kenny has been named. More than likely, Josh Kenny will get put into halfback. And by the time this video comes out tomorrow morning, Josh Kenny probably will be in the halfback position. And he's left Kieran Jack as a tackler there. Options. Um, still got Monday to, Monday to play. Uh, in terms of the ruck, he's got McAvoy to put in as well. Um, Pickens been really good. Uh, Liam Pickens been really good to be honest. I was surprised me. He's averaging, um, averaging like 67 as a uh, sorry uh, 36 as a midfielder last week. He had a really really good game. Um, Matthew Pavlich is back as well um, uh, against Richmond, and you know, we all know how shit Richmond are. Um, and Mitch Duncan's playing really well. So quite a few options for Dash to play. Um, whether he makes too many changes, I don't know. I don't think so. I, uh, yeah, see how he goes there. But as for as for uh, Maltese Falcons, big win last week against his fellow strugglers in Gods of Olympus. Um, on a roll, one in a row for Maltese Falcons this year. And he's probably not going to change too much. I mean, why would you change a winning side, of course? And he did get his highest score of the year last year as well. So he probably won't change, change too much. Um, <clears throat> Jack Watts playing... Uh, full forward, Gunson half forward, leave it as it is, why would he change it? Um, and then Stevens, Kelly, Gaff. The only change he has to do this week will probably most likely be, well, Tom Nichols has been omitted, so he's not playing. So he's either going to bring in Daniel Curry, because I think that's the only ruck he's got available. So Daniel Curry will come in for the ruck there. Um, yeah, so he hasn't really got too much else to choose from. Armitage has interchanged there. Dion yeah, Pressy can come in as well. I mean, he's sure he's got to lift, lift some time. But other than that, um, he's only got about two or three available on the bench to choose from because he's got a few injuries and a few players not playing. All in all, projections, 309 for Fig, 315 for Dasher. Um, Dasher, maybe he's going to find a rug and get out of that ice bath and, and get himself up because I think he might win this game. So I'm picking Dash to win only because Eddie Betts is playing against nobody. Um, nobody gets the Gold Coast. So I think Dash will win that game. Now, it's almost kind of beyond pathetic and, and, and really, really sad. Um, some of these text messages in that Cole has been sending through three, three time. He wants to call himself three time. Yep, three time preliminary finalist. Loser. Who claims a three time preliminary finalist? You haven't won anything, mate. Money back, that's fair enough. But um, sending messages how you know it doesn't matter about the scores and that kind of stuff, and telling us how good he is. And, well, Collie, you're no good, man. And you may beat me next week because I've got, you know, haven't got a very, very good, uh, very, very good matchup for my players. But you're no good, man. Anyway, you requested a song, you demanded a song. I don't want to play the song because I don't like it, and I think it's crap. But um. This is the song for Collie because we promise him if he play if he wins, he can have his song. So here you go, Collie. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Alright, that's enough. Sorry. Uh, that will do. Anyway. Um shake your glitter off your clothes, Collie. Because um you know, waking up in Vegas, what is that telling us that, you know, because you lost because we wake up in Vegas and that's the Vegas rules. I don't understand what the whole motive of that song was. But you are going to get smashed this week. It is Renegades.
No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. Yeah, the renegade funk, Polly. They're going to smash you this week. They are the highest scoring team in the competition. They are killing it. Uh, Steph, uh, you were the worst, I called you the worst team in the comp, but I can't say that because you are scoring very well. However, we have got a few losses this week, and we'll go into that in a second. But first of all, let's look at Kylie's team. Uh, projected for 316 this week, so you know, your scores are going up. It's one good sign, Kylie. You, you're starting to play a little bit better. Trying to chat at full forward against West Coast. Mm. Now, you've got Josh Kearney at half forward. Now, there's a big rumour Josh Kearney may not play this week, so keep an eye on that one before um, Friday. Maybe you want to make sure your interchange is someone who might be a good half forward, just in case he, he doesn't play. Um, but he is named, so here we go. Steph Martin's utility. Now, Trent West has been brought into the Brisbane team as well, so whether it's going to take a, away something from Steph Martin, I don't know, but he got to Steph Martin's utility. In fact, your team hasn't really changed from last week. It's pretty much the same. Chris Mayne stepped up as a tackle last week. As well as the halfback's been really good. Tom Hickey's been really surprising. Um, with Tom Hickey, though, Jameson Holmes is also on extended bench. Will they play him or not? I don't know. But we'll see how we go there. Um, options for you, Coley. You've got Brandon Ellis to play in the midfield. Levi Greenwood hasn't really been, you know, if, if he, he's been a bit iffy, so who knows how he goes. He's a bit of a tagger. He might run with Selwood or Dangerfield or, or Week. Who knows? Um, Piers Hanley. Now, at the MCG, who, 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 we'll see what happens there. Grant Birchall, it's hard to tell how the Hawthorne players are going to go with the news about Jared Rufford. Let's hope Jared Rufford's okay. Um, and he fights his cancer and he's all right and plays footy again or just, just is okay. It's a bit sad, really. Uh, other than that, Lindsay Thomas, you can put Lindsay Thomas as full forward. He's up against Essendon, so that could be... A, Oh, no, he's not. He's up against um, Carlton, sorry, at Etihad Stadium. I just saw the ES there, and he's up at Carlton at Etihad Stadium. Uh, their defense is Bristol with Weather in back, so we're having to go there. And, I mean, Elliot Yeo, yeah, your, your love child, I mean, you put him somewhere. But that's the team. Um, 316 for Coley. Um, and probably the best options, maybe put Lindsay Thomas as your interchange in case Josh King doesn't play, or even Chad Wingard as your interchange in case Josh King doesn't play. As for Renegades, who are, they are absolutely, I wish I had one, actually, wait, wait, ready, ready, Renegades, on fire, <laughs> that's right, you are scoring massive, 389 last week for Renegades, uh, big, big score, all your players did well, T Liberatore got 19 tackles, how do you complain about that one? Um, the only person who didn't perform was Tom Hawkins, you got him a full four this week, up against Collingwood, hello, Melly, how are you? Doing all right? Okay. So up against um, Kong this week, see how he goes. Rewell's been spectacular. I mean, he's play and he's playing Essendon this week as well. But he's getting 15 marks a game. He's at, like he's not, Last week didn't kick a goal and still got about 30, 34 points or 24 points or something. So Rewell's been great. Bit of a move here. 389 points last week, but you actually try and Michael Walters' utility. Now, Walters has been good. He's actually averaging 75 as a utility this year, so that will be interesting to see how he goes. And you've moved Jordan Lewis back to the midfield. Um, Lucky Hunter as well, like 50 points a game almost as a midfielder. Mummy in the ruck um, against the Western Bulldogs. Now, it was an interesting stat during the week. The, the ruckman against Western Bulldogs, against Tom Campbell and Jordan Ruffhead, um, somehow don't do do not do well at all. So we'll see what happens against them. But I think Minson may be back anyway as well. Zach Merritt last week got 89 or something as a halfback. And we mentioned Libra 55 points or whatever as a tackle. was awesome. Um, options to choose from then. You still haven't got Bala, which is, which is a, a main. Um, but you've got a lot of injuries as well. Took Miller's out, Matt Crouch is out, Sam Gray's in the extending turn of Prince. Um, no Aaron Hall this week has done a shoulder, and that's a big loss for you. Hodges out, Loeb is out, uh, Palo's omitted. In fact, on the bench, you've only got, I think, Peter Wright, Rory Lobb, and Ty Rickery to choose from. Uh, and Jack Darling is your interchange. So not much to choose from there. So you're down to the bare bones, but look, you're winning, so you can't complain. You've got your majority of your team there. You're going to smash Cole this week. Stiff is going to smash Cole because Cole is shit. Although, as I said, he's got a favourable draw against me next week. So we'll see what happens. But well done. And good on you, Stiff. Keep up the good work. You're playing very, very well. As for the uh, next game... Top versus bottom, actually. It is top versus bottom. Gods of Olympus, bottom of the ladder last year's defending champions against, so far, the uh, champions elect. 
uh, rang as anonymous. Um, Michael wants me to play this song, so come on, Mick. You done, Mick? Oh, come on, Mick. You gotta have these things ready before we get going, mate. Oh, amateur hour over here, seriously. Anyway, scrap this song, Michael. You're useless. You should have had it ready by now. Um, as I said, Gods of Olympus, struggling. I've only got one win for the year and one draw. Not doing too well versus Rangers and Anonymous, who have only got the one loss for the year. Um, Gods of Olympus are going to put as the... Can you just go back to the tags, please, Michael? Seriously, God. Um, Gods of... Sorry, guys. Let's say you had, sorry, you had, I'm sorry you had to see that. I really am. Anyway, Gods of Olympus. Um, Drew Petrie full forward against Carlton. Jack Rewald half forward. Now, Rewald actually has not a bad game against Freo over there, so that should be good. Um, as, as for the next game, the um, sorry, he's got Todd Goldstein. Now, Todd Goldstein had a really good game. He's actually not, not against any rucks at all this week. So, oh, sorry, he's up against Daniel Goringe. So he should do quite well. You know what? Millie just farted, guys. It stinks. Anyway, Coniglio in the midfield and still solid in the midfield. They've both been really good. Michael's questioning whether he plays Coniglio, whether he brings some, or someone like a McRae or someone in. So we'll see what he does there. Um, the other options as well, in terms of full forward for Solo, he might be an option for you against Geelong. He seems to play, come up and play well now and then when you don't expect him to. Going with Tipper in the Ruck and Shu as a halfback. Shu has been quite good as a halfback at 61. We all know the trade. Mick's going to get pretty soon to replace Shuey as a halfback, and that's probably a better move for Michael. By then, though, his season's probably over, so Shuey's probably more of a retain player, I would say. And he's trying Redden. Redden's got eight and nine tackles the last two weeks, so he got Redden as a tackle originally. He's going to try Redden as a tackle this week. Uh, Caddy's interchange. As I said, choices. He's got McRae, so Isaac Smith. Um, he's got Mitch Wallace. For forwards, he's got you know, for solo, Darcy Moore, maybe. Um... And Lewenberg can go in the ruck of the Astro as well. So that's Michael's team. Projected for 317. Up against projection of 323. That's Kenner. Um, Hogan against Brisbane. Now, this could be anything. Who knows? And Taylor Walker. <laughs> Mix just walked off in disgust. Hogan's playing Brisbane. Taylor Walker's playing Gold Coast. Jesus. What's going to happen there, Mick? Um, bit of a score. I think he's about to send a message on Facebook or something. Tell him how it is. sucks. Um, Josh Sell, Utility, Nathan Jones in the midfield and Sam Mitchell. Now he's lost Tom Boyd, so he's brought in Mitchell for Tom Boyd. Uh, uh, no. Matthew Boyd, sorry, not Tom Boyd, Matthew Boyd. I presume when Matthew Boyd is back next week, Nathan Jones will get taken out. Hanson, once again, the Ruck and Zorba, Zorka was a halfback. Zorka had a bit of a down game last week, which was good for me, but he has been the best halfback option. So Lean Shields, averaging almost 30 as a, as a tackler. Last two weeks, he's got 15 and 16 tackles, so... Well, he probably will. It's a big game tomorrow night. Might be a little bit of rain, so he may do it again. Uh, and Toby Green's back, and he's on the interchange bench. And once, once again, it's short of options here. Only three or four options to choose from. Only options really got is, is Goddard, Garlett, Cripps, and Tom Bell. Um, injuries are hitting a lot of people hard. He's lost Nat Foff for the year. Unfortunately, he's lost Ruffy for the year. Ruffy, all the best. Hope you're, doing, hope you're going to be all right, mate. I know you're watching. Um... Townsend's been dropped. Jared Wicks hasn't even got a game. Josh Walker's been dropped. Ivan Marich has been dropped, not getting in the game. So um, no depth there. So whether that you know plays a bit of a role and Rangers lose a second game in a row, who knows? I, I want to tip you, Mick. I do want to tip you, but the full power for Rangers this week is is going to win the game. I, there could be double figure goals from his two forward, like you know, like ten or eleven goals between the two forwards there. So Michael, I want you to win, and you know. Make a run for the finals, but sorry, Rangers to win that one. Now, finally, for the last game of the round, and two very, very good scoring teams, my lad. It's uh, Sugar Daddies versus Ask Kickers United. Um, Sugar Daddies averaging 320, Ask Kickers United averaging 321 around. Uh, in terms of projections, Sugar Daddies 334, and Ask Kickers United, which is me, averaging, I think, 344. Uh, do have to make a change to his team now, which is probably going to drop the the average down. Ablett's out, uh, concussed. More than likely, Robbie Gray will come in. In fact, Robbie Gray and, and Ablett are actually averaging the same as Utility. So, <laughs> not going to change his average at all. So, that will be the only change. Jeremy Cameron uh, against the Doggies. Uh, Waite, half forward against Carlton. There he's forwards. Murphy, well, as I said, Jake is out from North Melbourne. So, Murphy's not going to cop a tag this week. And Callum Ward as well in the midfield. Gorn's been phenomenal uh, against Brisbane. Martin will run around against his old team. I think Gorn's doing the other most hit outs there. 
Um, and Trelaw's halfback's been really good, 67, 68. Actually, Trelaw might be an option to play as utility and bring someone else as a halfback, maybe a Dow House or someone, um, and someone different as a tackler. Who knows? Um, options there. Delulio last week got 17, 17. Marcus Bontelli's been on fire lately. Robbie Gray's back. Steve Motlup, 25 positions, four goals the last two weeks or three weeks. So he could even be a utility as it stands. Um, Tom Gamble's been really good in the ruck as well. So in terms of options, Sugar's got heaps of options. It's always a matter of did you play the right one this week, and that's an option. That's a struggle that I go through as well each week too. So I know I know how it feels, but um, yeah, what what who to play? I'm not sure. But once once again, sure, you're playing me. I'm projected for three forty six, so projected to beat you. Um, sticking with the same team last week, I have made one change though. I've taken um, Dan Hanbury out of the utility because I don't want him to have a good game against Hawthorne. And I put Jack Viney in the utility against Brisbane. Uh, Viney's actually probably averaging my best as utility at the moment. On the other changes, of Dane Beams is injured. He's out for the year pretty much. So Dane, Be Dane Beams is out. Buddy against Hawthorne. Hope he, hope he has a good game. Hope Bruce has a better game. But um, Buddy's half forward now. Good thing is, at the moment, Jake Stringer's kicked nine goals the last two weeks. No red path this week. So whether that makes a difference, I don't know. But I'm not playing Jake Stringer. I'm just going to stick... I'm, I'm going to stick with my forward. I don't want to cry, you know, I'll probably cry again, saying String had a better game. I'm sticking with Bruce. Um, yeah, Vonnie Tilly, Hannah Brees, a Harakis in the midfield. Nick Nat against No Ruckman and Port Adelaide. That's probably going to be the difference in this game um, because, well, actually, Gorn gets about 45, 50 readouts anyway, and Nick Nat unfortunately shares for up. I'm expecting a big bounce back game from Scotty Thompson. He's been under, he actually has been on the fire, so I'm expecting a big bounce back game. Maybe his last chance. He did get 50 possessions against Gold Coast once. He may do it again. And I'm keeping Rory Sloan as a tackler. Rory Sloan is the halfback elect if Scott Thompson doesn't have a good game. And I've got Brad Ebert in as a tier to change. He's actually got nine and eight tackles the last couple of weeks. So he's actually been pretty good. In terms of options, I've got Cyril Rioli back. Um, and Chris Masson and Billy Hartan to play. In terms of forwards, I've got Jake Stringer to play um, as well. Segers can go in as forward or a ruck as well. They're my options. But... Pretty much, I'm pretty much chosen my best side, I think, um, and I'll I'll win. So, yeah. um, so that's all the games this week. Don't forget mid-season draft. More than likely going to be an online draft. Let us know um, if there's any trades as well. Um, so start talking. Try to make some trades if you have to. There has been a bit of cheer of the footy wire chat site. Um, yeah, sugar. There is a lot of messages on there. Like today was the first time I never really had a chance to look at my phone. Look at the end of the day, it's like 130 or 40 messages. Couldn't believe it. So um, once again, Steph Martin's actually up for grabs for Coley. Most of my players can you go look at, give me an offer if you want as well. But um, yeah, Queen's birthday weekend. Uh, maybe an online draft. Don't forget 50 bucks, everyone. Uh, lockouts tomorrow at 7:50. Hawthorne versus Sydney. Um, good luck to everyone. But sugar. See ya.